Today I'll be showing you how to install the Remote Server Administration tools on Windows 10 version 1809 and higher. Now prior to this version of Windows, you had to go find the MSI and perform the installation manually. Maybe you could script it or something. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to perform the installation with PowerShell. So I'll start out by running get Windows capability. I'll specify the name parameter with rsat star for the value. I'll also specify the online parameter. And what that's going to do, it's going to give us a list of all the tool names, the state, the display name, the description, etc. And while this might be good information to have if you only want to install some of the tools, if you're like me and you want all of them installed, it's not really anything you need. So what I recommend is run the same command but pipe it to select object and only select the display name and the state properties. That gives you a much more concise list of the available RSAT tools and whether or not they're installed. Now one thing you won't find anywhere else, because most people, while they can figure out how to use PowerShell to install the RSAT tools, what they don't tell you is what PowerShell modules were added and what commands did all those modules add. So what I recommend is get a list of all the currently installed modules prior to performing the installation. Store that in a variable. I'll also return the count. Okay, you can see currently by default on this particular version of Windows, with nothing else installed, there's 79 PowerShell modules. Now what I also want is what shortcuts are being added. So I want to get a list of all the shortcuts in the Admin Tools folder. I'm going to store it in a variable and I'll return the count of that as well. So you can see there are 20 shortcuts currently. Now if you're running this in the PowerShell console, you can just up arrow a few times, get the previous command, and then you can pipe the command to get the list of all the RSAT tools to the Add Windows Capability command. You also want to specify the online parameter, and that references the online image or your current operating system because these commands do support offline servicing of images, although that's not covered in this video. Finally, I'll pipe the results to outnull. I'll send them to the Bitbucket. You might be wondering, why would you send the results to the Bitbucket? Well, it's because they don't provide any useful output, at least not in this particular scenario. This installation will take a few minutes. Okay, the installation completed. And what I recommend to check to see if the installation completed successfully is just run the previous command I talked about that gives you the concise results. You'll be able to tell if they're installed or not. You can see that they're all installed. Okay, I'll go back and run the command to get a list of the modules again, except this time I'll use a variable by a different name. As you can see, installing the Remote Server Administration tools added numerous PowerShell modules. What I can do is use compare object and use the variable where the results were stored prior the, to the installation and after the installation to get a list of the differences. I'll also store these results in another variable called new modules. So you can see there are a number of PowerShell modules. And my question is, how else would you figure this out? And if you wanted to save this list, any of this information could be sent to a file and pretty much any type of file you wanted to in PowerShell. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use git command to get a list of all the commands that exist in these new modules. I'm going to pipe it to sort object. I'm going to sort by the source property. In this scenario, the source property is the module name. Then I'll pipe that to format table and group it by source. And what that's going to do, that's going to give me a list of all the newly added PowerShell commands that are grouped or broken down by PowerShell module. And as you can see, there are a lot of new commands that were added. So one thing I've heard Jeffrey Snover say numerous times is the way that PowerShell works is you think, you type, and you get. And that kind of leads into the next command of updating the help. Because a lot of times when people sit down to use PowerShell, they forget about the thinking portion. They just want to type and get. 
We'll take a moment to look at the help for these commands before attempting to use them. And in order to use the help, you'll first need to update the help for all the newly added modules. Now, you could just run update help for every module, but I've chosen to specify the name parameter, and I'm using what we stored in new modules variable to only update the newly added modules. Okay, it's not uncommon to get an error when updating the help. And as you can see, this specific module failed because it does not support updatable help. So you can safely ignore that. Until the module author adds support for updatable help, you will continue to receive this error each time you run update help. Okay, the next command, I will rerun the command to get a list of all the shortcuts in the admin tools folder and store the results in a variable and output the count of the number of shortcuts. So you can see now there are 45 shortcuts. Before the installation, there were 25 shortcuts have been added. Once again, I can use compare object to return a list of the newly added shortcuts. And in addition to shortcuts, there's one folder that was added, Remote Desktop Services. Last but not least, you can use Show Control Panel Item and specify Administrative Tools, and that'll give you a graphical representation of all the shortcuts that currently exist in the folder. This doesn't show you the differences, but it shows you the shortcuts that currently exist in the Admin Tools folder. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you.